Hello folks and welcome back. So I've had several comments now requesting that I talk about the LogSeq mobile app, so this week I'm going to do just that. I'll take some time to show you the app and how to use it as well as uh, just talking a little bit about where I think this app fits in with its big sister, the desktop app. Speaking of reading your comments, I do read them. To everyone that's asked questions and made video suggestions, thank you. If you have any other LogSeq topics or suggestions that you'd like to make, you know, please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I might move on, uh, you know, for a while and cover some other apps that I like and use, such as uh, Craft Notes, Capacities, or Obsidian. Okay, so moving on to the topic at hand. LogSeq Mobile is available for iOS and Android. It's free and I've gone ahead and installed a copy. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing you've got to do when setting things up is just to select a folder for your graph. And once that's completed, you're going to be brought to today's journal page. So let's go ahead and just go ahead and create a new graph. So I'm going to add a new graph and this is going to be called video. Okay, so as you can see, we are on today's journal page. Now, if you're used to using the desktop version of LogSeq, the majority of this layout is going to feel familiar to you. On the top left of the screen is a hamburger menu that lets you access the usual LogSeq left sidebar. You're going to find links to your journal, your graph, and your pages there. On the top right, the three dot menu reveals options for importing and exporting your graph customizing your LogSeq theme, your experience, and more. Notably, one of the settings allows you to enable the native sync feature, which we're going to talk about more in a bit. The bottom bar is where things start to deviate from LogSeq Desktop. It features four icons that help you quickly accomplish some of the key app functions. Just so that I don't confuse you, I'm going to go a little out of order here in explaining these, starting with the ones that I find the most important. So on the very right, there's a new note icon. Tapping on this is going to instantly bring you to a bullet on your current day's journal. So if you're on another page, it's just going to bring you right back to a new bullet on today's journal. Second is the search icon. The search in LogSeq Mobile, at least from my testing, is as fast and accurate as the desktop version. Next up, we have the microphone icon on the left, which acts as a voice note. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Tapping this icon allows you, as you can see, to start recording audio, and when the recording is finished, it's going to be automatically embedded into your journal. Finally, we have one that confused me entirely when I first started using the app. Uh, this icon, the little paper icon, it acts as a toggle between document mode and editing mode. Think of it as a reading mode and a writing mode. Uh, be sure to toggle this so that you can see the bullets. So you can see I'm toggling back and forth here um, because bullet mode is editing mode. And if you forget to toggle this and the bullets are missing, all of the outline features are suppressed and, um, and, and you could still technically edit the content on the page, but it's really confusing and none of it makes sense. So just tap that button to get a bullet to appear and then it's going to function like you're used to in LogSeq with your typical outlining features. Okay, so with all the basics out of the way, let's start just entering some data into the journal and see what else we can do. So the first thing you're going to notice as I enter editing mode and start typing is that another suite of options appears at the bottom to assist me with my workflow. They're in a bit of an odd order, and I don't know if I would have put them in this order if I had designed this app, but at least in terms of what I would prioritize, but I'm going to run through them as is. So the first two icons allow you to increase or decrease the indent of your current bullet and any children that are underneath. You can also accomplish this by left or right swiping on the item itself, so you don't have to use the button. The next two allow you to move parents and their children either up or down. So let's go ahead and do a second parent. Uh, just by pressing up and down on these next icons, you can see I can kind of shift the order of my parents around. The fifth icon here is actually a new line icon and it doesn't create a new bullet. It's kind of the equivalent on a keyboard of holding shift and hitting enter. It just creates a new line without creating a new bullet in your outline. After that, we've got a task creation button. So you can press this button and toggle between now, later, and done, or to do, doing, and done, depending on what you have selected for your preferred workflow in the settings. The camera icon allows you to snap a quick photo 
This along with the voice note in my opinion are really two of the most powerful reasons to even consider using this app, you know, as a companion to the desktop version. Um, being able to quickly stash information for later, you know, makes LogSeq Mobile a compelling alternative to maybe Apple Reminders or the Notes app. So if I just need to snap a photo really quick or take a quick voice memo, I'll reach for this app and it's there and will, you know, potentially even sync with my desktop version. Swiping to reveal more items, Next, we've got the undo and redo icons. They're way over here in the menu, and I honestly would have guessed that these would have been more prominently in the menu, but they're buried a little bit further to the right. Next up, we have a kind of sort of date picker. It actually lets you quickly add the date, as you can see here, Oop, hello. And you can choose today, tomorrow, yesterday, or the current time. So let's just add tomorrow. And I actually like this feature for quick note-taking. So next up, we've got the shortcut to create a backlink. So let's create a page here called Goats. You know, and because backlinking is such a prominent feature in LogSeq, I honestly would have thought that this one would also have been one of the first icons on the left, but it isn't. It's one of the last, confusingly. But of course, you can still use your keyboard to type the square brackets and you'll get the same, you know, menu interface as well. So referencing is next, and if you tap that icon, it's gonna conveniently create the double parentheses for you, and it'll allow you to search for another block and reference it, um, which is a nice handy shortcut, but I will say that it would be nice to copy and paste a block reference ID like you can in the desktop app, but for the life of me, it doesn't seem possible and I haven't been able to figure it out. And finally, the rest of the functions that are available in this app are all accessible through the command button that is all the way on the right. You can either tap this or you can trigger the commands to pop up the old fashioned way like you do on the desktop by typing the slash key and either way is gonna you know prompt you to search for any function that you're looking for such as embed video url all of the rest of these additional commands are a little too much to cover but they encompass some of the you know helpful features of logseq such as linking text formatting, there's a date picker, you can write queries, you can embed things, and much more. It is worth noting that LogSeq Mobile does not contain all of the features that the desktop version does. Maybe one day as the app is updated, more features will be brought into mobile, but for now, it appears that notably, no plugins are available, for example, and for many, this could be a deal breaker. There also isn't a right sidebar, which is understandable given the limited screen real estate, but I know some power users really rely on that right sidebar. So who is this app for? I think that the feature shipped with this app, as well as the features notably omitted, give us a little insight into what the developers may have envisioned for this app to be. I think that for most people, this is gonna be a good companion app for the desktop version. For example, you might either use a cloud service or the native sync feature in the app to sync notes between your devices. Then when you're out and about, you've got your daily journal in your pocket just to jot down some quick notes, take in voice memos, save links, and just quickly get data captured. With this workflow, you can extend the frictionless journaling experience of LogSeq to your pocket, and with mindful use of backlinks, you can even have your graph self-organizing on the go. I'm sure that it's possible to use this as a standalone app with success, uh, you know, especially on a tablet maybe and with a keyboard, but for me personally, my use case for LogSeq isn't really compatible with that. Okay, well I hope that serves as a helpful guide to getting started with this app. Did I miss anything though? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you like LogSeq and you want to learn more, please check out the other videos I have on my channel. I have plenty of content to teach you more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.